Hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome back to the Fat Muscle Project podcast. I'm John Gorman, your host. We got Lisa Franz in the house. Lisa, what's going on? How are you? I'm awesome. How are you doing? Good. After all this travel, and I know that's what we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk all about seminars and conferences, and you've really put together a, a nice, thorough set of show notes. And this is something I, I don't want people to think, well, why do I need to listen to this? This is a topic that will help you understand the benefits of not only attending, or if you want to speak, if you want to own your own seminar or conference, we're going to go into this whole nine yards. And I've got some really good examples here, and I'm sure you do as well, of what positive things have, have came from attending conferences. And a lot of big, big things have come out for me. So I'm excited to really get into this. So I'm just going to let you take the, the reins and take it on over. Awesome. Yeah, I mean, um, the idea of recording this podcast topic today was really came from us buzzing after those um, couple of events in January. And of course, you did another charity event um, after that. But I think those reflections are so helpful for other people to hear also, not just in the sense, because sometimes we think like, oh, it's just a conference. You listen to a few speakers, you take a few notes, and then you go home. But there is so much more to it. For me personally, the networking aspect, even just the aspect of being able, having been able to meet you in person, meet all your team in person, like it's just so different if you can put not just a face, but like an actual, you know, character to behind it, to a voice, essentially. So, um, yeah, let's get into it. Basically, the the topic is Fat Muscle Academy reflections. But what I want to start off with really is what prompted you to um, want to start your own speaking events because this year's Fat Muscle Academy was the third, if I'm not mistaken, or was that the the second? It, it was a third as far as Fat Muscle Project, but I've got a long history of putting on events and I figured that would be a good way to start this thing out. And I want to preface this whole talk by saying there's no way, there's just no way that things would be they, the way they are for me inside my ecosystem with the supplement company, with coaching, with these podcasts, like with any of this stuff, if I hadn't attended conferences when I did. The, the connections I made, the people I've met, the people I now do business with, there's no way I'd be anywhere where I am now. And I've still got a long ways to go, but you know, it would be a fraction of what we've been able to do. So the importance of conferences is huge. So in 2014, I attended my first, I would say physique enhancement conference, right? I'd been to bodybuilding camps and I'd even, you know, helped lecture at some of those, you know, we're sitting around in a room and, you know, I've got handouts for everybody and we're talking about peak week and all that. And that's, those are fine. Those are great. Those are camps, but I'm specifically talking about seminars and conferences, um, just get kind of at a higher level, right? A little bit higher education. So in 2014, I went to the university of Tampa and they had a great conference there. I had people like Ben Pakulski, Brad Schoenfeld, the who's who in physique enhancement and research. So it was really interesting. And I'm not someone that loves looking at research. I'll just be the first person to say that. I don't love it. I, I love applying what the research says in the trenches to my clients and seeing how it applies and what I do and don't like. But I'm not someone that sits and pours over research. I will fall asleep. I'm not a fan <laughs> of it. And I don't want to go to just a research-based conference all the time. I like blending the two. And in 2014, that, that's what I did. And I remember looking over to Leslie at the time uh, because she was part of that. She went with me and, and some other uh, coaches for Team Gorman. And I said, I want to be able to speak on this level at once at one point. Like, I'm not there yet, but I want to be able to do that. And what I did was went back home and I'm like, I can put on my, like, we've got a huge client base. Like, I can put on my own conference. So in January of 2015, I put on the, the Team Gorman conference and basically had a bunch of my clients attend, uh, a bunch of people that were former clients, even coaches that wanted to bring their teams and their clients. They all showed up. We had like, I don't know, 40 people show up. And it was, a, we charged like 25 bucks a person because we just wanted to get the job done and see what all it took to put an event on because you've got to organize it. You've got all these different things that go into it. And it's really, it, it was really a lot of fun. Still have a group picture from that. And, you know, we had four of us coaches and it was just so much fun. And that once I saw that, I'm like, oh, we've got something here. We can take this. 
And then from there, Cliff Wilson and I started the Physique Summit Conference, and that was next level. That was, you know, 150 attendees. You know, we're bringing in some of the top speakers in the industry. Cliff and I lectured every year. Jason Theobald became a big part of that. And we ended up having that for five years before COVID really just kind of put the hammer down on big events. And that was something where, you know, we didn't want to have 50 people showed up. We wanted to have 150. It, it was something that was special. Uh, and then we saw a shift in the industry and then everybody started doing conferences and it kind of led us to kind of putting that on hold. We still have it if we ever want to launch it again, but for the time being, we're, we're doing these smaller ones. Um, but the point is I started those and it allowed me to network mm. with a lot of other coaches in the industry. It allowed me to lead, uh, meet a lot of people that wanted to learn. I picked up a lot of clients and that's not why I did it. But it allowed me to make those connections. And I started doing so much business with people, you know, either other coaches or, or clients or people in general, like it really has led to everything. And then since then, just to kind of wrap this up real quick, um, Elite Physique University is, is the other podcast that Jason Theobald and Kayla and I put on. Um, it's been on a short hiatus because we're just taking a break. We're about to kick that back up. We've held numerous seminars with that um all over the united states we've got the fat muscle academy as we we're kind of alluding to and we'll talk a little bit more about that here in a little bit and a lot of bodybuilding camps that i put on from time to time with you know cliff wilson and ryan Irwin and pete fitchin and a lot of other people so there's a lot of that stuff that i do to stay in the trenches but i'm also that type of person that just wants to learn constantly and i'm drawn to other people that attend uh, people like you, people like our speakers, people like all, you know, all these events, they're so hungry to learn. I draw from that and I need to be around people like that. It drives me crazy and it shouldn't, but I see all these other coaches out there. They never attend anything. They stay the same. And I'm like, you know what? That's just a competitive advantage to anyone that's listening to a podcast right now you're the type of person that should attend a conference because you're interested in learning and you know, it's just, it gives you a competitive advantage. So that's why I started it. That's why we'll always do it. We'll continue to do it. And um, I'm really looking forward to some of the stuff we have coming up in the future. I, I think you mentioned so many great points there. Um, One thing that personally um has held me or sometimes scares me away from bigger events and i mean mind you the fat muscle muscle academy was still it felt really intimate for me and yeah. that was beautiful because you literally know like every person that that is there you know their name you know their company and like it was so tangible and then later on a couple of weeks later when we were at the hybrid health summit a completely different sort of environment because you have people from you know the entire country and most of them don't know each other um the organizers don't really know who's attending etc and still it was a very different um learning atmosphere great learning atmosphere also but what often scares me away from big things like that is um just simply people in that aspect because I am an introvert. Yeah. <laughs> so for me, the thought of um, I'm I'm gonna have to like introduce myself to 100 people in one day, or it, even when they're just saying like, hey, we're we're all gonna say hello and shake hands to with all the people around us, and that is part of it. But for me, still like signing up to things like that is good because of that because it's pushing me outside of my comfort zone. And okay, maybe I don't take 50 people's phone number like they're suggesting every single day but maybe i make two three contacts maybe i exchange five my instagram handle with five other people or so so the networking aspect really in our industry it can't be understated and particularly um with the online digital agent you know for me for instance living abroad also and um, most of the time it's literally me my laptop and even though i have a small team of ladies working for me me, um, it's it's still not the same as meeting people in person, shaking hands, and them also being able to put a face to your name as opposed to me just messaging someone random on Instagram and be like, hey, would you like to be a guest on my podcast? Or, you know, they're, they're a lot less likely to want to collaborate with me if they have never heard of me versus me saying, hey, we met two days ago at this and that event at the Fat Muscle Academy. Um, you know, would you like to come and uh, speak? at my pot or do you want to collaborate in some way so I think 
it's so big. And even like if you're listening to this and you're thinking, oh, I don't really like big crowds. I don't even really like travel. I don't, you know, it's it's an extra expense because if you look at it beforehand, you think I'm spending all this money and technically I don't really see any return of, as you mentioned, your big return is going to be learning, just absorbing more um, knowledge. And that was another part for me too, because um, for instance, at the hybrid health summit as well, like I looked at some of the lineups of the speakers and some of the most interesting or impactful ones were actually the ones where I didn't really think I needed to listen to, or like I didn't, I couldn't really put anything behind mm -hmm. that. And then I listened to them and was like, that was incredible. I would have never followed you, consumed your content or whatever, but because I was there already and I just, you know, I, by chance listened to it, I, it, it, it was knowledge I would have otherwise never absorbed probably. So um, yeah, a lot of that, great points. That, that's, and I, I know we're going to break down three different events that we have been a part of this year. Um, if you don't mind, let's start with the Hybrid Health Summit, since you kind of brought that up. Let's save Fat Muscle Academy for last, because sure. I want to tie that into if you want to start your own, um, maybe we can kind of finish with that one. But I think talking about the Hybrid Health Summit, <clears throat> the bigger event out of the three we're going to talk about today is super interesting, um, because... I'm like you, I, and I'm usually a speaker at these events. I, I don't normally get to attend stuff where I'm not a speaker. I try and like make it all work. So it's really interesting for me. I don't like to go out and quote unquote network. I, I don't like it. I'm not a salesman. I'm not very good at that, but I really made a shift this year. And I can tell you a real quick story. It, it was the first day of the hybrid hill summit. We're in Florida. And I brought my son Gavin with me and he he just followed me everywhere with a phone. And I'm like, I need to start documenting like all this cool stuff I get to experience as a speaker. And he followed me. And I remember the first day, it's the day before the event, because I'm always a day early because I'm just weird like that. I want to like skip my surroundings and see how everything's going. We're down in the hotel workout room and, you know, working out. And there's someone down there working out. And I didn't say anything. I, I'm the type of person. I don't want to bother people. I didn't introduce myself, but instead this guy introduced himself to me and it was one of the best connections that I made. And then his girlfriend was actually running the event. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So I was like, oh, wow. Like this kind of comes full circle. So it was really good meeting him. I made a great connection. We pretty much just chatted all weekend. He ended up buying supplements. He did a review of them on, on, uh, on Amazing. Instagram live, like all the, I got it. All it was is I was just nice to him and he was nice to me. And yeah. I looked at Gavin, I said, Hey, listen, I'm going to show you like, this is how you make connections. You just go be very nice to people. So like the whole weekend I went and met everybody, the new ethics team. I went to dinner with them, got pictures with them, eating dinner, um, the social event. I went there, you know, we all dressed up nice and I went in there and I got pictures and video with every single person introduced myself. And it helped other people that don't like to be that social. It helped them relax. And those were the best connections that I made because most of us want to just be comfortable. And we we kind of just want to be in our own little world. Listen, I could go back in my room and sit at my laptop and do some emails and stuff like that's comfortable to me. Being out is not comfortable. Even though I go speak on stage, it's the weirdest thing. So uh, one of the connections that I made was very good. And that was Bedros Koulian. Mm. Um, oh, yes. He was the basically the biggest speaker, I would say there. And I, I made sure I set aside time to listen to him because I've been interested. He has a mentorship program, a coaching program, and it's not cheap. It's a hundred grand a year, but the guy has gotten to $200 million, right? And like, I want to know how to scale from, you know, making it seven figures is cool, like figuring all that out ourselves and like making the push to get to, to eight figures, how to get beyond that. It's, it's like hiring a coach, you know, like people might know how to diet a little bit and they've, they've been successful, but they want to get to that next level. So they hire us. Right. That's what kind of Bedros is, was like to me. So I, I met him backstage, Vince introduced me, um, you know, as one of the other speakers and we talked and, and I just kind of relayed to him. I said, Hey, like your message really resonates with me. Like, you know, I showed him the tattoo on my arm from nothing we rise and just, you know, his story is, is, is pretty interesting. So he gave me a cell phone 
And by the way, he didn't give me a cell phone like, hey, I like this guy. He's cool. He gave me a cell phone because I told him, hey, I'm interested in possibly hiring you for a year of mentorship. Um, and he said, hey, text me. You know, And ha I haven't texted a guy, not one time, because I'm not ready for that. I'm trying to wrap up some other things before I go bring on a year's worth of coaching with somebody. I need to have some other loose ends tied up that I'm working on. But that was a massive connection. And I made myself go do that. I didn't want to bug the guy. Like people are trying to get pictures with them nonstop and they're, they're trying, they're all trying to get a piece of them. I didn't want to do that. I didn't want to seem like, like that was me. So I forced myself into that and it was good. And then all the other connections I made with the other speakers and it just, it was so crucial and so important that I'm, I'm doing business with three other people from the event alone. So that's a big event. I wanted to give people my my take, Lisa. I know you've got yours. Um, yeah, I I was I just wanted to mention on that point with Bedros that that I think that is another awesome point part of um those kind of events that you usually have people that are ahead of you, right? That you can look up to a little bit like idols, and it shouldn't, of course, you know, we don't have to be like fan uh boy or girling these yeah. people or whatever but it's more in the essence of what you said earlier when you mentioned you were at that event and you thought or said even said to leslie i want to i'm going to be able to speak on a stage like this one day and that's like that whole you call it manifestation call it envisioning call it whatever you want but like being clear on where you want to get to and then people that um, serve as role models, and they just complement that so nicely. So even if you have a nice vision of, I wanna be able to do that, or I'm gonna be able to do that one day, like actually seeing someone doing it and then also learning from them potentially their roadmap is just, it's it's a way to speed things up. I know we, we, we can always refer that back to nutrition. Of course, someone can Google their own macros and learn from scratch and blah, 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 and go through their own failures when it comes to nutrition. And they might get to where they want to get to also, but it's going to take them longer than yeah. if you hire a coach, than if you have a role model of like, hey, that person trains this and that many times. They're so consistent. I'm looking up to them. So I think that whole, is it um big, big fish, small pond, small pond, big fish, whatever it is, but you know, not just always staying in your own little network where you might feel really comfortable. You might be the fittest person. You might be the most successful person and you're feeling all good about yourself. And yeah, that's cool. But at the same time, like exposing or getting in a room where you're the least knowledgeable, where you're perhaps the, the person that earns the least amount of money has the least experience. It is so it is so powerful. It can really, really, especially if those are positive, uplifting people and, and people that are there and keen to offer their help. Um, that that can do so much to your growth, accelerate your growth so, so, so much. Oh, yeah, I agree 100 percent. And that's that's probably the biggest one that, that I'll, I'll speak at for a while. I mean, there was over 400 attendees. Um, I was very fortunate. I got to speak at three different times. Um, which was awesome. I got to be on the main stage as part of an entrepreneur panel. I got to give my how to uh, organically build a seven figure ecosystem in the fitness industry. I got to give that in one of the side rooms, which was cool because that room was pretty full. Um, and then I get to give another talk out on the main stage on Sunday. So, it, you know, I got to speak more than I think almost anybody, except maybe me and Jason Theobald got to speak three different times. So very fortunate. Uh, shout out to Vince and his whole team over there. Mm -hmm. um, I I highly recommend everyone listening attend that event. Um, if he does it again in January, I think that's great. Um, you walk away very empowered. You walk away with a ton of knowledge from a bunch of different experts. But to meet the people that you can go meet, it's just well worth it. And, you know, sometimes you may not pick up clients there if you're on the on the come up, right? But if you're a coach and you're a very established coach, invite your team. Like take your team with you like that is so powerful, and important. And that's why I do a lot of local stuff because my whole team will show up. Um, but I got numerous clients. Every time I speak, go to a conference, I'll pick up, you know, a handful of clients. So even if I were there to attend, I would still pick up clients. It just works that way. So it's, it's a good way 
there is ways to make money off of that as well. So um, I know the one thing I will say about the hybrid health summit that I enjoyed a lot was that it was at a worm location in Florida. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because the two weeks prior when we were at the Fat Muscle Academy, um, it was, well, I don't even know whether it was in Fahrenheit, but it was freezing cold for me. So yeah. I would highly appreciate if um, the next Fat Muscle Academy <laughs> event would be at a warmer time of the year and unfortunately that kept a couple of people from attending but i don't think anything major right no no and i know we're going to get into that in detail that that was a fun event um it was negative three on the day that you left and we had a snow and ice storm kind of hit so uh, more more on that but you know um the next one, if you want to talk about, was in Nashville. And I know you couldn't make right. that event because um, people don't realize, I mean, not everyone realizes, like, you live out of the country. So that's right. Yes. Um, yeah. But you tell us about that event because that was a charity event at a gym. Is that correct? Was that, or yeah, tell us about it. Yeah. Uh, both, both events were, by the way, Hybrid Health Summit raised over $75,000 uh, wow. for childhood obesity. Uh, great job by Benson's team once again. The next event was at Jeff Black's gym, Iron House gym in Nashville. And we had, oh man, I, we had at least like 10 speakers or so. Uh, I, and I'll try and name them all, but I won't be able to because I'll leave somebody else out. Um, and it was at his gym and that was cool. It was like that. We had like 55 people show up and it was, it. see, I like that. I like very mom pop. Speaking events with 50 people. I mean, don't get me wrong. I love the big ones, even if it's like Physique Summit. But I love when there's 50, 55, 60. We had 71 at the Fat Muscle Academy. I love that because I've got time to be with everybody. Like I've got enough time over two to three days to visit and just be present and listen and mm -hmm. just make those good connections. But this was another event, a charity event raised over $5,000. Uh, for kids with brittle bone disease. And Jeff Black, if you all know him, he's a great human being. And that was really, really fun. We set a booth up there. Uh, we set a booth booth up anytime we go to an event. So that was fun. I got to get, you know, Fat Muscle Project supplements in front of people. Just talk shop. Let them try it. it. It's great for business, but it's a good way to connect. And we did that at his gym. And it was just a blast. And the, the connections, they had someone there from all kinds of different industries, from the finance industry we had keto experts like Ben Azadi there. Um, we had coaches that coach coaches um, like like Taylor. Uh, we had just so many good people there. And I just loved it. Like I, I went away from it just having a blast. And it was like a six hour drive for me. So I took Tony Annanoff, one of our, our sponsored coaches, one of our top sponsored individuals for Fat Muscle. And he ran it with me. And it was just, uh, it was a blast. I talked about, how to combine diet breaks and um, rapid fat loss together into a system I did for myself and my clients mm -hmm. um, last year, 35 of my clients. And I just gave people the whole protocol and they loved it. And I'm, I, so many good connections came out of that. I had so many people email me, message me, you know, ask me for the PowerPoint, ask me questions, thank me for my time. And it was just another one of those events. Like I am so glad that I went. And by the way, I was so fried at this point because we had had the Fat Muscle Project Academy, which is our event, with all of our coaches and our top customers and people that bought tickets, like 71 people. And then two weeks later, I think it was two weeks later or a week later, I don't know what it was. Like it all runs together. I drove to Florida. It was four, two days driving there, speak and, and be there for four days. And then two days driving back, I was exhausted. And then I had a couple week break. And then I went to Nashville, which is six hours one way, six hours home. But we were also there to, for two full days. So, you know, I at that point, I didn't want to go anywhere, but I knew it was very important to do that. And I'm glad that I did. It, it was an event. I hope everyone goes to that again next year. You know, none of us got paid from that. You know, we're all there on our own dime. It's for a great cause. And I will always do this one. I will, I will never ask for a, a dime to speak. Like this one is always something I hope I'm able to, you know, continue to be a part of. I know he'll have other speakers, but I just can't say enough good things about that. He'll probably have it again next year. I would think around this same time, sometime in February, maybe. So keep keep your eye out for that. 
Well, tell us about that busy um, lead up to the Fat Muscle Academy, um, essentially. Also, I mean, just the preparation, the vision behind it and everything else, because, yeah, I mean, you were so busy. So the, this is the part I want coaches and people listening. If you ever want to have your own, if you ever want to have your own. And by the way, it doesn't have to be what you see on social now. Like if you see me post like. I always get a group picture with him when I'm speaking, like I'll, I'll do this corny side chest pose. and like, we're all flexing because we're having fun, right? We're all a bunch of bros at the end of the day. You see that, you see what looks like big crowds and you see these successful events, but let me tell you, it's, it, it doesn't start out that way. Like it just doesn't. I posted numerous times. The first time I gave a, a talk was at my old gym that I used to own in front of nine people handing out, handouts like here's your workout here's your sample diet like here's your cardio like here's how to lose fat in january of like 2009 um and i the paper in my hand i was shaking like a dog shitting razor blades like i was shaking that bad like literally you know it starts out like that it starts out small but the reason why i bring that up is it evolves over time and as you bring in speakers and you have other coaches or other people like you that have two or three clients that will show up. Like it all starts, I do this with people all the time in my mentorship and my one-on-one -on -one coaching. They're like, hey, I want to start speaking. What do I do? And I'm like, well, here, here you go. You start with yourself and a couple other coaches that you know, and you speak in front of five to 10 people and that's okay. Um, so what's happened is this has evolved into the Fat Muscle. We call it the Fat Muscle Academy, but night one is on Friday night and it's for our top customers, our top 10 customers. It's for our top retail accounts, the people that buy from us hotel and they resell it out, you know, like gyms and supplement stores and trainers and, you know, all kinds of different places, grocery stores. We bring in those top customers and we also um, open up tickets for the next day for the Fat Muscle Academy seminar. And we had myself, Cliff Wilson, uh, Jace Lopez, and you spoke this year. So it was all four of us and we gave four different lectures and we did a Q&A with some of our other coaches. And it was really kind of a, in our, inside our little fat muscle bubble, but we opened it up to people to buy a ticket. It was only 99 bucks and people raved about it. Like the word tribe kept coming up over and over. And they're like, this is such a positive tribe. We just want to always be part of this. And that's what we do every single year. And we do it to get back to our top cups. It's not a money-making event. Like it is not like, I don't even care like to say it. Like it's, it's a 20,000 in the hole type event. You know what? That's what you do. When you make a bunch of money all year, you get back to your people and you say, thank you. You know, some coaches out here, they do that. They'll, they'll have contests for their clients. They're like, Hey, I'm going to get back a thousand dollars to the best transformation in you know five months. It's a good way to make some money, but it's a good way to get back. Um, so that's what we do. We do it every single year. But the lead up to that is always, it's fun. And thank God for our team. Thank God for Jacob Clessons. Thank God for, you know, everybody shipping, John and Jay and, you know, Gavin getting pictures and video behind the scenes and like all of our coaches that stepped up to help set up the stuff, Josh and Jason. And, you know, I'm going to leave people out, but it's so crucial to have a team to do things because I'm the type A type person. Like I want to do them all myself and I put too much on my plate. Kind of why this podcast hasn't been dropped every single week or two because I've been so busy and I need to outsource, which we'll get to, but it's with this, you have to have a team and you've got to have people in place and it just really becomes fun. And to me, it's the best event of all because it's the one where I feel like, it's kind of like Christmas when you get together with your family at Christmas or a family reunion. You're like, I am once a year, like I'm so happy to see everybody. And let me just, let me just see how you're doing. Let's just talk. Like you got questions like, Hey, how's your family? Like, it's just that way. And if you can get to the point as a coach or trainer to where you start your own event, I'm telling you, your retention rates will go through the roof. You will love what you do even more. It is so fulfilling. And I mean, I, I can just talk on and on and on about holding your own event, but that's kind of what that's turned into. And you got to attend for the first time. So you can talk uh, about was, that feel. I was so um, honored to, to be there. And of course, uh, to have been there and um, to speak as well. But uh, like I've said before, it like the, the, the family feeling 
it was so tangible. I mean, like literally like getting to know your family, your sons, Leslie, your, your staff, uh, et cetera. Um, that makes it that itself, you know, in some other bigger conferences, those are like the quote unquote behind the scenes people that you never see, which makes sense as an event grows. But I actually thought that that um, added to it so much. And I also love that you had that sort of run up that warm up event on Friday night where like um, also just um, can I just say how awesome I thought that the food was included because I will contrast that for instance of course with a bigger event like the hybrid health summit it wasn't included but it just meant that every time you had a lunch break you needed to like everyone ran out to try and get their own thing somewhere some it just um it uh it I want to say it prevented the possibility to chat during that time also yeah. so if you wanted to chat in between you had to either miss a speaker or sneak out when someone was speaking or something like that but the breaks for me was literally okay where can I get food right now I have like 30 minutes I need to go <laughs> and uh, on the contrary with the fat muscle academy that was like a family meal like uh, le also let's let's mention how awesome the food itself was I mean it was perfect it was like chicken rice and broccoli and the next yeah. day turkey uh, potatoes i was like you know yeah. how much better can it get so but no it literally felt like a family meal everyone got to, to eat as much as they wanted and while you were eating it was another opportunity to connect and talk so that was like literally for me one of the highlights i will say and then of course the cherry on top of it was also the joint workout yes. on the Saturday night. I mean, no, like honestly, what a beautiful way to round it up. And of course, you you can't you can't do that probably with five hundred or a thousand people. But exactly because of that, like it was so cool because you don't just talk about training and the latest philosophies and nutrition, but you actually see how do the other people eat? How do the other people train? You give each other tips. You ask, okay, what phase in your diet are you in at the moment? I can see you brought your own food. You're probably prepping. And like, you know, that's just other connection points that are missing at uh, at other events. So I, I just wanted to highlight that I thought that those things that might have seemed minor or might some someone might miss, that meant a lot. Let's let's talk about the importance of adding food. And then I want to talk about the group workout. Um, at the very first conference I did, like I said, in January of 2015 is a Team Gorman conference. Um, <laughs> I remember, you know, obviously I was with Leslie at the time, right? So like we were we were at our house back then and she's like, I think we should feed everybody. I'm like, really? I'm like, they're bodybuilders. Like they're going to bring their own food. She's like, no, bro. Like we should feed everybody. And I was like, okay. Well, Leslie's really frugal and she's very good with her money. Like that girl is awesome. And she was like, I got this handle. Don't worry. So like her and Michelle and our team, they got a bunch of like Hawaiian rolls, like the great Hawaiian rolls. And they got lunch meat and sliced cheese. And they had some other snack. I can't remember, like maybe some fruit trays or something. And basically they just set it out and they bought enough for everybody and people, and I was thinking, oh man, people are going to complain. They're not going to like this. They loved it. They loved how <laughs> mom pop it was. They went through, they ate their food. They were taking pictures. It was literally a blast. Um, now, fast forward, now that was a learning lesson for me because I'm John old man Gorman, the bro. I'm like, no, nah, bodybuilders are bringing their own food. It's fine. No, feed everybody. And that was important. So ever since then, we've always made sure at every event we cater a meal. And it's real easy. Like you want to be able to cater something that everyone can eat because most people are, are dieting or they're in a room full of physique enhancement enthusiasts. Like they don't want to feel bloated. Like everybody wants to look and feel their best. So getting, you know, quote unquote, clean food is perfect for everybody. Um, so we always do that and it doesn't cost that much. But here's the thing. If you're worried about it, make it part of the ticket price, right? Like if you're going to charge 50 bucks to attend and you know, it's going to be 16 bucks for a meal, charge 65 bucks for a ticket. Like people will hap happily pay for that. So they happily. don't have to plan. Happily. They don't. It, yeah. And it just, it just makes people feel appreciated. And it's one less thing you have to worry about. And the more people will talk about your event, the more they'll come back and the more they'll bring a friend with them. And that's, how we've been able to do this going on almost 10 years of holding successful conferences. And, and I mean, even just for it to the point of um, a smooth flow, right? You prevent the chances happening that 
Um, like, like for instance, we went out for lunch a couple of times in, in Florida there, and we had to run back, like literally run back in order to be semi on time for the next speaker. And that was a shame because I would have loved to enjoy that meal more. And yeah. I would have loved not to be a little bit late for that next speaker. So, you know, it, it just, it allows for a smoother flow. It just makes everything so much more relaxed. And again, like that connection point was just um, for me, something that really stood out. But yeah, in general, I did want to ask you what was because I mean, of course, often, especially when people have like a wedding or something like that, they say, I don't remember any of it. It was just such a blur. So much was going on. So my question to you is, as the host, what, how did you observe and intake everything like in hindsight now? Is it also kind of like a little bit blurred together or you were, you were so um, like occupied thinking about, is it going to go well? Is it not going to go well? Or were you actually able to enjoy it somewhat also? Finally. This year, I really was able to sit back and enjoy it. And it's always hard for me if I put an event on and I always speak. Like, I'm always focused on my speaking. I want to make sure I deliver. Um, now, I've been doing it so long. My main concerns are, is the food going to be on time? Is an ice storm and cold weather going to hit and prevent people from showing up? You know, we, we got these awards to give out on Friday night. And Ramona was, uh, who was a guest on your podcast, by the way, which is kind of cool. We can plug that at the end. But, you know, Ramona's, I knew she was in second place and she was getting a thousand dollars, but her plane landed at six o'clock and we were going to start our event at six o'clock. So it's like, I let everybody eat longer. I was in constant contact with her. Then I thought, mm -hmm. well, maybe we'll just announce the retail awards on Saturday when everybody's here. Like it. Putting on these events, I've literally dealt with every setback imaginable. I've got stories of Leslie at the Physique Summit having to go to the emergency room with abdominal pain 20 minutes before the event started. And we're running registration and I'm the first speaker. You talk about a nightmare, right? Like I've been through it all. So with all that being said, this time I was able to speak on Friday night, give out the awards and be the CEO of the company. And, you know, have our staff meeting to the next day speaking after lunch. And I just enjoyed everything. And it, the awesome. group workout, that's the time if you if you were there, you noticed I just walked around. I didn't work out. First of all, my brain just isn't in a mess with a workout. Like there's no mind muscle connection. I've stressed about the weather and everything. I just want everybody to have a good event. So I showed up <clears throat> and I walked around and I just talked to everybody got some pictures with everybody, had some fun. That's what it's about. Like, I don't need to work out that day. And I looked over at John Strathy. He was our video guy and he captured this whole weekend event. Um, I said, hey, John, this is, this is going to sound really bad. We're a supplement company and we have not once in two, in two to three days gotten any video of us using supplements. I was like, that's funny because that's actually who we are. It's not, Fat Muscle Project isn't a supplement company, right? It's it's a community. So I know everybody says that, but there's your proof right there. Like we're not trying to sell a bunch of supplements with, with all this video. I said, but hey, we should probably at least get some of our top folks in here. You know what I mean? That we're getting awards and they've got the Fat Muscle stuff on like, like have them mix up their supplements and let's, let's get a video and, and, and highlight them because that's, you know, they're there, you know, because they use the products as part of it. So I think we got three or four videos in there. We just kind of laughed about it. Cause it's like, we're the worst with marketing. Like, cause it's not about forgot. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Well, I guess, um, yeah, I mean, speaking of, of you enjoying that and kind of how it evolved from the first to, to that one also, what's your vision for the Academy let's say next year, three, five, whatever, 10 years down the road. Is that something that you want to grow even more? You want to have it a multi-day, even more multi-day event, um, different locations. Um, tell me about a little bit about your vision. So with Fat Muscle Academy, that's a different beast because one, I do want it to grow and it grew this year from like 50 to 71 people. Um, We've got room at that location for about 100 people. We would be packed in there. Springfield's kind of our general area, and that's where most of our top people are. So I don't want to take it on the road because then I would ask a lot of our top customers to have to travel. Um, and we always pay for their hotel and we pay for all that stuff. So like the expense would go up through the roof. I, I still want to keep it in Springfield. But what I envisioning happening for it um, 
eventually I'd like to make it a two day event and I'd like to make it something a little extra for our coaches. I'd like to bring in some top tier speakers from outside of fat muscle project, you know, someone like a Bedros or someone that's very accomplished that, you know, they're not just hearing from me and our other coaches, they're hearing from someone else. that's very accomplished and, you know, some kind of an industry that has a crossover, right. That they can learn from like a Tim Grover type person. So eventually I'd like to have something like that. Um, or I'd like to have a separate event once a year just for our coaches, right? Mm-hmm. To where it's it's something where it's learning. Um, we get a bunch of content and like we do that in the summertime. We're we're throwing some I things around. I could really around. envision that quite well. And like to your point of forgetting to film content, you could specifically make that like, hey, we're doing like a weekend where we train every day together, we eat together, and we literally have like a video person that films all of that. And you could use that for exercise demo you can use that for your product launches you can use that for and i mean on top of that it's incredible for team building as well so i i, I could really see that quite quite well and quite being quite fun also yeah it's something where i'd like to get it to the point to where you know we do have a location here in springfield we did the physique summit here one time we had like 125 people um awesome. missouri state university we could certainly it holds up to 500 people so Eventually, what needs to happen is I need to reach out and I need to get some big name speakers. Um, but in the meantime, we're we're sitting pretty good. Um, we'll see how that goes. I just want to be able to deliver a really good event for everybody without it getting to the point of being so big that it becomes not a family feel type event. And that's yeah. it's the same way with growing the supplement company, by the way. I've 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 tried to not let it get off the rails because when things get so big, you, you lose touch with the people that you built the company with oh, you yes. know? and that's why we do this every year with our top customers and coaches i'm like i'm very aware of that so i don't want it to get so big to where we lose touch with that we we, we see companies change all the time and sometimes they just can't help it because they grow so mm-hmm. fast i was part of one at one point and it just lost touch with the community and they did not like that they did not mm-hmm. like it so i'm like very aware of being careful with that, make sure to involve our people. So that's, that's the goal. And I'm watching it closely. So very nice. So I mean, uh, outside of Fat Muscle Academy, what's you do you have a, a bit of a lineup for the rest of the year? Are you attending or speaking at any other events? So we're talking about an elite physique university in Omaha. We've had that on the table since the fall. Um, there's some really good places and people that we can do business with up in Omaha. Um, Right now, I'm just tired. I'm, I'm just tired. So like okay. a lot of that is is on hold uh, because of me. And we're trying to get all of our schedules together, myself, Jason, and Kayla. But I I, I would like to do something like maybe this summer there. We'll Ooh. see. Um, but other than that, no, like I'm wide open with speaking in the fall. And those usually come, I, I get a three to five, six month notice. There are some business conferences that I'm wanting to try and speak at since I've been doing a lot more of that, which is outside the physique enhancement realm. Uh, the grit summit last year was great. So there's some other entrepreneurial type uh, seminars that I want to try and speak at. So I'm working on that. And by the way, for those of you out there trying to start a speaking engagement lineup or, or get into the trenches and start speaking um, a lot of times you have to go out and you have to get yours. Like you don't, you can't wait for people to knock on your door and ask you to come speak. The hybrid health summit, I raised my hand. I'm like, and Vince knows me. Um, I'm like, hey, I'm I'm gonna come speak at this man if you'll have me. I'm like, you don't have to pay me. Make sure you cover my my uh hotel and all that stuff. I'm like, I'll show up and bring the heat. And I did, and I made people very happy there. And guess what? I got to speak in front of four to five hundred people. So mm-hmm. You know, not everyone's going to come knock on your door. You have to go make those happen. And for a long time, for years, people saw it on social. I would show up to colleges and guest lecture to, you know, the personal training classes and departments and all that type of stuff. Like, you know, I went back to the college that I graduated from and I, for three or four years in a row, I would speak to those students. Mm -hmm. So it's about constantly staying out there and you've got to go put your hat in the ring or you may not exactly. ever get to box if that makes yeah, sense. Yeah, and don't I think the point is also that you're trying to make if I'm correct is uh, don't be afraid, well, number one, don't be afraid to get your hands dirty, but also um don't feel like you're quote unquote too good for something just because there might only be five people attending. You know, you might yeah. might think like oh, what's the point of doing that? But like you said, it all it all grows. Um my my last question is going to be just for anyone even like if they're not interested in 
in having their own event or necessarily being a speaker, but how can anyone network today, like even just today, if they feel like, I feel like I'm alone on this physique enhancement journey. I feel like my friends, my family don't get me. Like how can we network in a semi-organic way without perhaps, you know, just dropping in someone's inbox and being like, you, do you want to be my mentor or do you want to be my like virtual training buddy or whatever, which is kind of weird. <laughs> yeah. Do you have any for, for networking? Yeah. Outside of events, you mean? Like if someone yeah. doesn't have an immediate event that they can go to. Uh, one, there, there's still a ton of events all over the place. Posing seminars, they're all over. Just Google that stuff. Attend that stuff, like attend, right? Um, other than that, it's some people are okay with meeting people through a virtual space like Instagram and things like that. And I know it seems weird, but find the people that are part of something that you want to be part of and just follow along, comment on their stuff, you know, like Renee uh, Schneider is a perfect example. I've been posting a lot of her pictures lately. She's getting peeled and shredded. Uh, Carrie Ferris, who ended up, we brought on as a sponsored um, athlete. Um, a lot of people surround themselves with her online. So then they get to meet up with her in person and they're like, oh, wow, she's through. I've always wanted to meet Carrie. So just being a part of that through social media, that's one of the benefits to social media and just comment on their stuff and follow them. And by the way, ask, if you have questions of them, ask questions, right? Or if you're going to be in the area and be like, hey, I'm going to be in the area, um, would you want to get a shoulder workout in? Like, you'd be surprised how many people are okay with that. Uh, sometimes it can be weird, especially if you're a female, like it can be weird if, if you get approached, right? Um, but that's, that's tough. No, I think you mentioned a, a really good point. Cause like we always say, you know, if you like the show, share it on your social media, share it on, like if someone were, was to just think like, Hey, this is my favorite podcast or John always puts out such informative posts and they constantly like once a week, they repost your stuff. They, they tag you in their stuff at some point, And then maybe a few months later, they might be like, Hey, is there any chance I could get a free sample for one of your, your way just before, before I taste or whatever, you'd probably be like, yes, this person is legitimately interested. Mm -hmm. I see they have been retagging and whatever, and they, they support me in that way. And I know that they're probably going to purchase something once I send them a free sample, you know, like that, I think that goes actually a long way. Yeah, I agree. The, the other thing too, is the gym that you train at. Ultimately, you want to try and find a gym that's full of people that are interested in what you're interested in. So, you know, a lot of people know I used to own two anytime fitnesses and one in particular, like we built that into a community and Jason Wells has bought those since then. And, and he still has a good community there. Um, but you see a lot of people, you show up, you see them training for events, find a gym that has people like that. And a lot of times they will have seminars. They will hold camps. Um, drive. If it takes you a little while to drive, go surround yourself with those people at least once or twice a week. And the other thing too, if you're ever coming through Springfield, just hit us up. Like I'll, I'll get you into one of these gyms. Jason Wells loves it when people come and they train at the gyms and, you know, he's just that guy. He's, he's a wealth of knowledge as well. Not to talk about a huge inspiration. So like, there's a ton of people there that, are all training. They're all motivated. So, I mean, you're always welcome to, to swing through, but it, it, this can be a lonely endeavor if you're an introvert and you don't have a lot of people around and all you have is social media. It's tough, but guess what? Physique enhancement's tough. Dieting's tough. <laughs> Working out is tough. Like you do the tough <laughs> shit already. So exactly. break out of that shell. Trust me, I don't like it either. Like I just go sit in my room and sit on my computer and like <laughs> play video games type of guy. Like it, it's going to make you better. Awesome. Well, I hope people got something out of this episode and that encour it encouraged them to um, go to more events like that next week or next proper full length episode. We're going to talk about the science of carving up but yeah thank you everybody so much for listening that's it from my side anything else to add from yours john no we just ask that you guys share this please share it um with a friend you know if this brings you any kind of value share it if you tag us on social we'll, we'll reshare we just appreciate that um we're trying to grow this everybody's got a podcast now so it's so hard if you could just leave a quick review hit pause and leave a review we appreciate that and if you ever have questions 
suggestions, anyone you'd like to have on the show, um, hit us up. You've got our emails right now in the show notes, either one of us. Um, this has been fun. I can't wait to talk about, we've got a question of the week that we're getting ready to record. Um, but the next full length episode, science of carving up, that's going to be geeky. I can't wait for us to talk about that. Stay tuned for myself and Lisa. We're out here. See you guys. See you.